Don't get me wrong. Alleged that Trump took out a loan on Mar-a-Lago and overstated how much it was worth. I think she valued Mar-a-Lago at 18 million, which is ridiculous. And people say she's just an honest person. She's not going after Trump. The president of the United States has complained that I'm engaging in some sort of political witch hunt, that I've got some personal vendetta against him, that I campaigned against him. That is not true. This illegitimate no, president who sits in the White House. That president, because he's not my president, he's an illegitimate president. <laughs> Can you imagine I want to divorce my wife, I'm battling, and I say hey, I don't really hate her, and then on the streets I'm screaming, her days are numbered. And we've got to get ready to agitate and irritate until victory is won, but more importantly, until Trump is defeated. Yeah. Donald Trump has got to go, hey, hey, ho, ho, Donald Trump has got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Democrats just agitate. Well, now guess what? You agitate and irritate yourself into an appeals court. Help me, help me. So the Trump fraud case went before the appellate court this week. And by the time it was over, the closing arguments of the Democrat lawyers was just them begging to not get sanctioned. Agitate, irritate. Scar. So look, many people aren't aware that the Trump fraud case went before the appeals court this week. And if you don't know how an appeals court works, there are five judges that sit in judgment for these cases. And they basically let the prosecution and the defense both lay out their cases. And their job is to consider whether or not the case was worth hearing in the first place. And it went so badly for the Democrat lawyers that by the end of it, their closing arguments was just them begging to not get sanctioned. So they argued a ton of different things throughout this case. But the biggest thing was the judges kept interrupting them. They kept saying, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you find me one other time in history where the person who took the loan was able to call the bank that they took the loan from, and then that bank showed up and said, we weren't defrauded. And the lawyers spent like two hours trying to find one little instance where it happened. May it please the court, Judith Vail for the New York Attorney General's office. All of the defendants repeatedly violated- Ms. Vail, can you identify any previous case in which the Attorney General sued under Executive Law 6312 to upset a private business transaction that was between equally sophisticated partners where the supposed victim had the ability and legal obligation to discover the allegedly misrepresented matters by conducting its own due diligence, where the supposed wrongdoer advised the supposed victim through written disclaimers to conduct its own due diligence and to draw its own conclusions, where the alleged misrepresentation almost entirely concerned inherently subjective valuations of properties and businesses. Yes. And where, and where the victim never complained about any fraud in the transactional losses from it. Because I've gone through the cases which you've cited, and all of them always involved the consumer protection aspect. It involved protection of the market. Oh, several responses. And I want to add to his question, and little to no impact on the public marketplace. Well, maybe I'll take that. It doesn't look good. I have one working eye. It doesn't look good. It doesn't sound good. It's a good Netflix show for me. But then the judges said, okay, let's try something else. They said, hey, have you ever prosecuted someone for lying about the value of a property when it resulted in the entire loan being paid back with interest? And again, they gave them like two hours to try to explain their case and they still couldn't produce a single case where that had happened. Back to, to Justice Moulton's point about line drawing, because I, I do think that that is very important in this case. You know the history of this statute. It, it's passed under then A.G. Uh, Javits and then was really amplified by A.G. Lefkowitz over the years. And when I went back and read the bill jackets, it, the common thread was always we need greater power. The A.G. needs greater powers as the people's lawyer to protect consumers civil rights and the environment. And so again, with, with that sort of historical backdrop to this law, how do we draw a line or at least put up some guardrails to know 
when the AG is operating well within her broad, admittedly broad sphere of 6312, and when she is, is going into an area that wasn't intended for her jurisdiction. The appeal court is preparing to overturn Letitia James' nearly 500 million case against Trump. And the judge is making it quite clear. Guardrails against Letitia are needed. If that is the case, and most people agree with that thinking, you have messed up so bad that even I can say you're taking advantage of a law and you're misusing it just so a person can be a president. And then the judges said, hey, you know what? We'll give you another shot. They said, have you ever seen an attorney general prosecute a case where there was no damage to the public? There was no damage to the person you said was defrauded and there was no actual malice committed by the person who took the loan. And then they took another like six hours on that one. And by the end of it, the judges were like, so you don't have any instance of that happen. That's like me defending, I need to slap my kid just in case they're going to do something in the future. But you're not allowed to punish me for the damages that I did to my kid. Because you don't know what's going to happen in the future. And then by the time they were done, the judges were like, I don't even know if this is a case that should have been brought. And they said, look, y'all might need to be sanctioned for bringing this case in a malicious manner. Letitia James got to go. One of the judges actually said, I have come to believe that since a case like this has never been brought in the history of the country, not only New York, that you have only brought this case because the person was running for president, which would put you afoul of not only multiple regulations regarding the law, but would also run you afoul of electioneering interference. No! In fact, at the end of it, when they got to give their closing arguments, instead of arguing the value of their case, instead of arguing that like we should have been able to bring this case because of X and Y and all this shit, they actually just said at the end, we hope that the court will take into account that lawyers need to be able to bring cases like this without the threat of sanction. Please forgive me. I know not what I do. Basically, they were saying, we hope that you decide that we're not going to get in trouble for bringing this bullshit case. That was what happened at the appellate court. So Trump being found guilty of fraud and having to pay 500 some odd million fucking dollars and the whole left celebrating about that, he's gonna get all that money back because the appellate court was like, this is a bullshit case. The people he took the loan from literally came to court on his behalf and said, hey, we weren't defrauded. We knew he overvalued Mar-a-Lago. We took that into our calculations. And even if we had taken that into our calculations and the value of Mar-a-Lago was part of 0.14. Like the president of Deutsche Bank said, you know why we gave him the loan? It had nothing to do with the value of Mar-a-Lago. It had to do with we given him 21 other loans and he has paid back all 21 with interest, we were giving him the loan regardless of the value of anything. That's it. The fact that it's a good business deal and money is okay, why the heck would you mess it up? God, I hate him. And that's where the appellate court was like, how do you have a case? Deutsche Bank literally said we were giving him the loan regardless. And that's when they start begging to not get sanctioned. So yeah. That's what happened with the Trump fraud case this week. Going really well for the Democrats. Through fraud, they went after a person for a fraudulent case and now they are facing fraud because they chased a fraudulent case. Isn't that ironic? Don't get me wrong.